What's up, fam? I'm sure you guys saw the title of today's video, and we're going to do some drones. And for this, I like to use the same technique that we used for the complex arpeggios, but we're going to simplify it a little bit and use the LFOs to control more of the morphing parameters for the wave scan and have those LFOs affect the envelopes and the envelopes affect the LFOs and just create a ambient drone patch. So to start with, we're going to go to oscillator 1, move the mode to wave scan, and edit the wave list. Again, we hold shift and just scroll through the options. I like to start with something in the Esquire or the Synclav. They're a little bit softer. And in my opinion, make for a better uh, drone list. So that sounds pretty good. Go to oscillator 2. Turn down oscillator 1. Turn up oscillator 2 in the mixer section. Again, go to the wave scan and the wave edit. Hold shift. Still a little bit harsh on the horizon. Uh, sync lav 3. That sounds pretty good. So for oscillator 3, I like sine wave. Now for the drone patch, uh, what we're going to do is use one LFO to control the pitch and the other two free-running LFOs that aren't attached uh, indirectly to the filter and amp are going to be used to morph between the different waves of oscillator 1 and 2. But we're going to use one LFO to control the pitch of all three oscillators. So oscillator 1 is going to be our main oscillator and oscillator 3 is going to be our sub oscillator. That's why I set the oscillator 3 to sine wave. But for oscillator 2, we're going to go down minus 7. And that will become more apparent once we start to use LFO 5 to control the pitch, which will set that to beat sync and to the step. Go into the second page and set the semi log semi-lock to on and we'll set this for 32 steps. Now when we start to edit this, this again is going to control all three oscillators and oscillator 1 is going to be a positive amount, oscillator 2 is going to be a negative amount. Oscillator 3 is going to be a positive amount, um, but that is our sub-oscillator. So it's going to mimic our main oscillator. And since we have oscillator 2 sent to minus 7, having this be affected by a negative amount will still be within the same key range, but it will produce a more, more or less... Uh, organic kind of relationship between the notes. So let's just start to edit this. And again, if we keep everything within musical relationships with, within the semitones, uh, plus or minus 12, 5, 7, 3, we'll just see what we can come up with. So I'll turn this latch on and adjust the oscillator relationship volumes in the mixer and let's see what we got so let's turn on the LFO 5 pitch assignments LFO 5 oscillator 1 LFO 5 oscillator 2 one thing to remember, when you're in this modulation matrix, you need to hit exit to make a new connection. 
So oscillator 1, positive. Oscillator 2, negative. Exit. LFO 5, oscillator 3, positive. Exit, exit. Try and latch on again. Go back into LFO 5, page 2, step edit. And let's see what we got. kind of droney at the end. It's kind of droney at the end just because it's 32 steps right now and as we start to add values to steps we will get more complicated patterns. And again we can edit the timing of this because it's set to a specific rate for the beat per minute. So let's slow that right down to a rate of a dotted whole note. This gives us a more droney kind of quality to the tone. And once we're done editing these steps, we're going to go into LFO 3 and 4 respectively and have them edit the wave scan function of our oscillators to give more timbral variety. that oscillator 3 down to minus 24. That'll give us more of a sub. And we'll turn the beat sync on for LFO 3 and 4. Let's see. Let's use the sample and hold. to affect LFO 3, oscillator 1, wave scan. And if we go into the second page, we can smooth that out. Trying to level down. And since it's on a beat sync, we can fade the LFO itself in. Which is rather nice. Now let's go LFO 4, oscillator 2, wave scan. Also have it affected in a positive amount. Turn the rate down. Offset the phase. That sine wave sounds kind of smooth, but let's adjust it to about like. Let's turn the level down. Now 
does have LFO 3 affecting envelope 4. Shorten the dry wet. So that sounded pretty good. Uh, let's put a little bit of effects on that and maybe slow down the LFO five. Definitely my favorite type of reverb. Turn that right up. And let's use the LFO 1 to control the dry or the time of the plate reverb. So let's exit out of that. LFO 1. Reverb. Time. And let's go to LFO 1. Turn on the beat sync. Triangle wave sounds nice. Let's go to an offset of, say, 45. Have it kind of fade in a little bit. Let's smooth it out. Okay. Let's also start to adjust the filter. Maybe some 
lo-fi and the post effects. Let's see what that does. That's a proper drone. Let's see. Let's uh let's maybe use LFO two to control the oscillator three. use uh, maybe LFO 3 to pan the oscillators. We can adjust the panning. So we have oscillator 1 set to a positive amount to be panned by LFO3, and oscillator 2 set to be panned by a negative amount. So we'll do the opposite in here. Negative. Positive. And we'll just do filter amount.
<laughs> oh, that's too much fun. All right, let's save that. And uh, let's see. Ambient. Again, arbitrary name. And save. Anyway, I hope you guys found this informative. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Uh, I love doing these hydrosynth walkthroughs, sound designs. This is literally my favorite instrument. If anybody has seen any of my other hydrosynth videos, you would definitely know that this thing is the best digital synthesizer that dollars can buy. Anyway, hope to see you guys next time. Peace.